I'm Elspeth Jackson from Ragged Life. I'm also the author of Rag Rugs, Pillows and More. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be teaching you how to do loopy style of rag rugging. So this more kind of tightly woven type of rag rugging. And we're gonna be learning how to do it using simple, basic rag rug latch hook. Um, it's all very easy and you'll be whizzing along in no time. Uh, happy rag rugging. So for the loopy technique of rag rugging, um, we only need a few tools really. The first thing that you'll need is you'll need your hessian base for doing the rag rug. So what we're looking for is a weave of hessian that's roughly four holes per centimetre or ten holes per inch. Um, the weave is very important because if it's too loose your rags will fall out um, and if it's too tight it's just quite labour intensive and difficult to get the rags through the hessian. Um, so best get it right to start with. The other bits that you'll need is a latch hook. So it's got this little dangly bit here called the latch and you'll need long strips of fabric. Generally, the longer you can get your strips, the better because with this technique of rag rigging, it's really nice because it's almost like weaving. You can get into a real rhythm once you get started. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the top of the strip so it's between our index finger and middle finger and slightly further down between thumb and fourth finger um, and the reason that you do this is because you're trying to create tension to make it easy to hook onto this bit between your fingers um, and it just makes it easier than hooking onto a floppy strip so what i'm going to do is i'm now going to hold that strip underneath the hessian i'm going to push through from the top of the hessian to underneath and I'm flipping it over so you can see the back of the hessian but generally um, we never look at the back you just kind of know where the rag is but when you're a beginner it's not the end of the world um, we're then going to hook onto that bit between our fingers and as you pull from the top the latch bit will come down you're letting go and you're just pulling one end of the strip through to the top so in the loopy technique, it's much shorter than the shaggy technique. So I'm now going to pull from underneath so that the end that's through to the top is roughly about a centimetre or a quarter of an inch in height. Um, but you can vary this technique and do different heights, which I'll show you in a second. So once you've got your first end in, generally I, do, I go into the next hole in the hessian grab onto the strip and just pull a loop up through that next hole. So I've got an end on its own and a loop. And I do my first three loops all in the next hole to each other generally. So I'm now just placing the rag into the hook and just wiggling to pull another loop up. And you can see that I'm keeping the height of the loops very nice and consistent. And that third one is in the next hole. So I've done my first three loops very close together because I'm trying to tighten up the hessian around where I've rag rugged because it's the tightening of the hessian that keeps things in securely. If you miss out too many holes, um, it just doesn't make it as secure. However, you don't want to rag rug into every hole now because the hessian will begin to pucker up um, and it won't be able to support it. So if I just kept rag rugging into every hole, that's what would happen, it would cave in. So what we're gonna do now is once you've got your first three tightening loops in, you generally miss out two holes between each loop and the next. Um, but this does depend on the thickness of the fabric that you're using um, and a few other elements as well the height of the loops and whatnot. But for this height of loops, I'm gonna miss out two holes. Make sure that latch fits down, grabbing on and pulling through. And you keep going, getting into a rhythm um, until you're building up almost like a platform. When you do your next row, so say I was building up a rug and I was doing it in stripes, I generally miss out two rows in the hessian and then repeat. I'm just gonna show you that you can do your loops at a different height. So I'm going to pull them a bit higher now to create a very different looking technique. So if I was doing things like petals around a flower, I tend to do them a bit higher um, to create this kind of petal look. So it depends on what kind of texture you're looking for, 
how you decide and what height you decide to do your loops at. Um, and it doesn't matter if the loops are folded over, it doesn't matter if they look a bit strange, it's once you've built them all up that they all kind of look nice and uniform. Um, so you can keep going with this second row and you can see that I'm really nearly reaching the end of my strip now. So I'm only going to be able to do a couple more. So I'm keeping these nice and consistent in height but higher than those ones behind. When you reach the end of your strip, so you can see that I've reached the end here, the way that you finish it is you pull it through to the top and then you chop it to the same height as all your loops are at to disguise it. When you want to start a new strip, the way that you generally do that is you start it in the same hole as your single end is in because when there's a loop coming through a hole there's two bits of fabric padding out the hole when there's a single end in there it's a bit more vulnerable so when I start again I'm going to pull my new strip through the same hole as that single end is in and I'm just going to keep going you don't need to do those tightening three when you start a new strip in the same bit of the hessian because you've already tightened the hessian and you're just making your way. So there's a couple of things you can do wrong in this technique. One of them is obvious. You miss out too many holes between one loop and the other. If you do that, you'll end up with a bald patch like this. But most importantly, you end up with a long loop on the back. If you have a long loop on the back, it's very vulnerable to being pulled. And if it gets pulled, it'll pull the entire strip out. Um, so you can see it's pulled this bit out. Um, another thing that people do wrong is if you rag rug too close together, so this is fine, but say I'd rag rug too close together, your hessian will pucker up like this. Um, if it's caving, you're rag rugging too close together and you need to miss out more holes between one loop and the next. Um, the last thing that people tend to do is I call it the case of the disappearing loops is people start with their loops at a certain height and then they get shorter and shorter and shorter as they go along. Just try and make sure that your loops are all nice and consistent in height because that will make things look neat in rag rigging. Um, so once you've built up a good amount, it will look vaguely like this. So here I've got t-shirt material, cotton, fleece, this is a knitted fabric, um, a satiny fabric, denim, chiffon. You can use anything for loopy rag rugging, but certain fabrics are easier to use than others. Um, I hope you found this tutorial useful. And if you've got any questions, you can always email me or comment below. Um, and I hope you enjoy rag rugging.